Ross. Uh, this, this, he's not as skinny as he was. He's actually he's been swimming, so he's really built up his muscles. He's been bulking up. But he was about this thin. Look over there. He's about this thin. And he came into my editing room when I was editing my DVD extras of Born Into Brothels, which we direct, I directed. And he said, I want to just edit for you, and I'll do it for free. I said, who is this kid? And he seemed like a nice guy. And I said, I won't let you work for free, but at the end I'll pay you something. And he did a great job. And then he kept asking me to look at his short film. It's a three-minute film, four-minute film. For how long? Three minutes. Three minutes. And I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, because I'm really bad at time management. I always say it's because I'm busy, but I'm really bad at time management. <laughs> and, um, and I finally saw it. It was at the Tribeca Film Festival. And, like, what you, was the title of it? It was called Coney Island 1945, right? And it was at the Tribeca Film Festival. And I was in the office, or my office, my apartment, which I was working at. And Jeremiah's like, Ross, it's playing today at Tribeca in, in, in a half hour. Can you please just fucking go see it? I was like, all right, I ran, ran my bike down there, almost got in an accident. I just made the beginning of the, the short film, it was like, and I watched this thing, and at the end of the three minutes, I was sort of a different person, um, and I was really pissed off and jealous. I was like, this little motherfucker. Oh, that's the biggest compliment. Though. Oh my God, I was so upset. I was like, this, this guy's working for me. Like I was like I should be working for him, um, and then and then that night I had a, one of our mentors come over my apartment and look at the film. A guy named Sam Pollard, and Sam came over and looked at it because you know you never know. Like I just I was just amazed, and Sam was amazed, and I said to him, I said it's beautiful, and he, and you were so humble. You're like really you liked it? I was, I was like it was beautiful, and it was. Well, and Jeremiah is now everyone knows that Jeremiah is like one of the most talented filmmakers that we have around. So. But this, there you have it. this conversation is between two directors, both of whom have films in the U.S. documentary category. Yeah. They're friends in competition, and they both have made. We don't have any competition. Ab absolutely. I mean, creative competition. I don't. Mean, not even creative. All right. We had a fight last night. He beat the shit out of me. Yeah, no competition. Awesome. Yeah. He wins. The competition. He wins. Yeah. Exactly. And your films are very, very different kinds of film. You've done the, the documentary on Pamela Smart called Cap. Yes. And you've done the film E-Team, which is astounding. I, I said this to you last night. I just Thanks. Astounding well, thank you so much. But what yeah, I you were in the front. You were like second row. Yeah. You asked some great questions. Thank you. What I wanted to ask the two of you is what is it that unites you in vision as documentary filmmakers, although your subject matter is quite, quite different? Is there anything in... Nice in vision? Friendship. Friendship. Friendship and just like kindness, like you know, yeah. like nice we, I, yeah, just like we want, we want to be good to people, and people are sort of good to us in return, and we support each other. We like so a community, but 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 actually, I was hoping you would talk about the fact that both of you have taken very difficult subjects uh, and and tried to present to the audience in a way that they can understand. The complications that this, that the situation they're in is what needs to change, and that the audience needs to do something. Here comes another director. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Um. So it, it, Pamela, now she's been a subject of a couple of doc, are in a couple of documentaries. And what drew you to going back again? and saying what your documentary says is she didn't get a fair shake. Well, it was Lori's idea, actually. Ross and I were just talking about this. It was Lori's idea, not my idea. Um, she, it's really her baby. And she saw In a Dream and thought I was the director that could direct it. And I became fascinated with the storytelling aspect of, the, of it. There's actually a friend of ours um, who made a book called Liberia Bit by Bit. And he showed me that book. Actually, Ross, you were there that night. He showed us both the book before he printed it, and it was like this big, and he showed me the, the middle of it, and the middle of it was a rotting orange outside a courtroom, and, and it was this beautiful photo of a rotting orange, and he said, that's what my book is about, the whole book is about this, and what he was really saying is, you always need to look where nobody else is looking. If everybody else is looking at one thing, you need to look 
at what everybody else isn't looking at because that's where the interesting things are happening. That's a good way to put it. Same with my film. Same with everything we do. But, yeah. but, but Ross, you did in your film E.T., you actually have the characters that you follow through this story. And last, I'm going to grab a drink. I'm coming right back. And last year when The Square was here and it, and it won an audience award because it was so timely, it still had no through line of people you follow. And Janoon has said that after she won that, she brought it back to Sundance, yeah. to the Institute, and worked on it. And what and she gives them credit is that they pulled out the character. Yeah. Jeremiah spoke. actually was one of the editors on The Square. Ah. Yeah, I was. So, yeah. so pulling out the characters, and in your film, you make so real these larger than life, you know, sort of. Every little girl is going to want to be Anna in a way, you know? <laughs> and yet Anna's cooking, I'd Anna's like pregnant. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have, little boy's going to want to be Anna. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. They have a nice relationship because he's the softer of the two. He's and heart. she's just she's a... Heart. She's the heart, too, because her, her heart comes across. The question I asked yeah. him last night, or her last night, was about her parents. Yeah. Now, who did you film her parents? I was concerned about, you know, what would happen to her parents once this documentary is out, which leads to the question of once you put your film, your documentary on the street, do you let go of the subjects that are in it, or do you continue a relationship with them? I mean, I haven't made that many films. Ross never lets go. <laughs> for better or for worse. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I form, you know, like this. You form friendships with these people. I mean, it's not just like you're making a film. I mean, it is at the beginning. But, but you have to be objective at the same time. I don't think so. I just, I just go in. I make a film. I want to get to know people. I feel like if I can get my audience to relate to the people and get to know them, they'll love them and they'll love the stories that they're. Working you know what about. you said earlier? Why, why we, why we work together and make and what unites us? Empathy. Yeah, we, empathy. Yeah, I think that's empathy. Right. It's always weird to say, like, I can say you're empathetic and you can say I'm empathetic, but he's like an extremely, extremely empathetic person, and, and like, you know, you just want to... Empathy. All, all I want to do, when I'm, when I'm making films, all I want to do, and it's sort of, you know, it sounds like a general statement, but I just want people to care about other people. And if they care about other people, they'll care about maybe some issues that other people care about, and, you know, hopefully that'll have a great trickle effect throughout. You know, I just want people to care about other people. And you do that with Pam. I mean, you... Whether you should or not, it doesn't matter. It's like this is a human being. It's a human being. She, she's got faults and she's got frailties and she's got, you know, definite character traits that might not be so wonderful, but she's a human being. I'll tell you, Ross even empathizes with people that he doesn't <laughs> like. Yeah, I do actually. Much to my wife's chagrin. Well last night <laughs> last night in the audience. <laughs> You're better at not empathizing with people you don't like. <laughs> I'm better at that. I have lines. Ross's lines are more blurry. It was very touching for me. <laughs> uh, to see man, Steve, I gotta work on that. <laughs> to see Steve James and Joe were both there at a ten o'clock screening to see your film. Who, who was that? Steve James. Oh no, that was like we had like Katie came up to me, my co-director yeah. came up to me and goes, We had a lot of famous documentary filmmakers. Yeah. And they're all our friends, but you know, it's back then. You're and a famous the, documentary filmmaker. Oh my god. He's a famous Journey, documentary Journey. filmmaker. You're there. But it was really sweet. It was really nice to have. And they, they're also, I mean, they're very giving in, in their and assessment meant, of the film. That and that, was, that to me was a Joe said some, like, wonderful things. He's awesome. He is. A community of peers, you know, who support each other. That's what I got. They could have been in many other places, but they were there to see your film. The documentary community is pretty tight now. They're good people. Yeah. They're just good people. Yeah. The documentary community is good people. Yeah. But how do we get Pam Smart out? No, I didn't. You know what? I have a funny feeling this film might help. So. At least it brings up a question that needs to be answered. The problem sometimes is that the world becomes filled with answers instead of questions, and answers are useless. At what point did you watch Eve Esler's documentary? At what point did you watch Eve Esler's documentary about teaching poetry? In the very beginning. The first very thing. Beginning. One of the first things that made me want to make a movie. She's so, in that movie, that's what Pam Smart is like. I could never get an interview that was like that movie. Because she's too aware of the cameras. 
she needs to be unaware. What was impressive to me about that film is that you, they didn't identify who the participants were, except by first name, until the role. I'm one of the people that stays and watches the role and says, get out of my way. And there's Judy Clark, there's Kathy Boudin, and there's, and there's Pam Smart. And I have no idea. I would have looked at it totally differently if I had known that up front. Fascinating, so, right? Thank you. thank you very much. Sure. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming to the screening oh. last night.